This might surprise you. I'm taking the Las Vegas Raiders to beat the Los Angeles Rams in Week 7 action. And coming up here on the Raiders Report, I'm going to tell you why. The first reason why I'm taking the silver and black to get a dub, this is a home game for the Raiders. I know it's in SoFi. But it's in L.A., and there's only one team that still owns L.A. According to Vivid Seats, the seven Week 7 fans, 61%, are going to be rocking silver and black. 39% of the fans are Rams fans, and when you look at a lot of the ticket prices, shit, if I was a Raiders fan too, why would I pay all those prices to go to a Legion Stadium when I can go to SoFi Stadium and rock out with the entire nation? But this isn't the only reason, and the graphic that I'm going to show you is going to be like, wait, Mitch, yeah, I know what the stats are showing me. Aiden O'Connell is a lot better at home, but this game is technically a road game. You're not wrong, but let's face it. If I'm going to sit here and say there's going to be more Raiders fans at SoFi, damn it, I'm going to treat this like a home game. Aiden O'Connell at home, 64.9% completion percentage compared to the road at 59.1. Look at the yards, advantage home. Look at the touchdown interceptions, advantage home. The quarterback rating, you add all of this together. And, excuse me, the quarterback rating is actually the record overall. So, Aiden at home is 4-3. and three. Aiden on the road in his starting career was 1-4 and four from top to bottom. So, I believe Aiden O'Connell will play better at home against the Los Angeles Rams. That's going to be a big reason why we get a dub this week. But, for those of you that do not know, our sponsor today is Prize Picks. And Aiden O'Connell, you can get that at 211.5 passing yards against the Rams. And if you want to let me know down below how you think AOC is going to do, I want you to type more. I want you to type less. Guess what? I'm typing my more down below. And if there's any Raiders fans out there, download the Prize Picks app today. Use code CLNS and get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Pick discounts select player projections up to 25% to promote even more value for your lineups. That link is available to you all down in the comments, down in the description. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. Let's go to the next reason here. Why the Raiders are going to beat the Los Angeles Rams. This team, the Rams, really struggle against tight ends. Did you know that the Rams right now are giving up the highest percentage of reception targets to the tight end position? Right now, 91% of targets to the tight end position the Rams are allowing. When you look at fantasy points, and I know some of you are going to roll your eyes a little bit because it's fantasy points, but... We also know that when a team gives up more points to a certain position in fantasy, that also usually means that they're struggling against them in the real NFL. And you can say what you want about Luke Getze. You can say what you want about this tight end room. But this tight end room is legit. And with Brock Bowers, he is right now, I believe, the best tight end in the National Football League. He's a top five blocker already as a rookie. He's a top five receiver as a rookie. And he's going to have a big time game up against Los Angeles. I mean, it's really hard to slow this guy down. And you know what? I I was also looking at a prize picks lineup, and I got another question for you out there. Will Brock Bowers score a touchdown this week? If you think 89 is fine and paid her, well, then show me those TDs, because you know what? I think that Brock Bowers is going to end up scoring a touchdown. Why? The Rams have allowed three receiving touchdowns to the tight ends this season, which is second most, tied for second most, in the National Football League. So we got a 50-50 shot with number 89. If you throw up a 50-50 ball to number 89, guess what? That guy's coming down with it. And if anybody wants to put a little bit of money in their pocket, you can also take advantage of this awesome deal right now with Price Picks. Anthony Edwards just needs to score one point in the season debut for him. And then you want to go Brock Bowers more on 0.5 touchdowns, rush or receiving that's a demon pick Aiden O'Connell give me the more right now if you do this exactly what you see right here on price picks you can do the power play which is 20 to win 150 that means all three of those need to happen basically only two or you can do a flex play 20 to win 80 that means either Brock Bowers has got to score a touchdown or Aiden O'Connell's got to throw for 211.5 yards prizepicks.com slash CLNS just make sure that you use code CLNS shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring the Raiders report hopefully you guys make some money let's go to the next one here the Rams they've struggled this season and they can't really run the rock and neither can the Raiders right but the reason why that I say this is right now the worst rushing yards per game 
Look at the Raiders there at 31. But I really want you to look at the Rams. They are averaging 97.4 rushing yards per game this season. What I want the Raiders to do is really stack up there on the interior, try to slow down that running game, which really should help out this defense overall, which is going to force Matthew Stafford having to chuck the ball around. We'll see if Cooper Cup's going to be healthy in this one. But I like the way that the Raiders' corners stack up. But the one player that does always scare the hell out of me is Kyron Williams. You're going to make Kyron. Williams beat you in the receiving game. He's been a productive back when he's been on the field and when he's been healthy. But overall, if the Raiders can slow him down a little bit, that's really going to impact this offense. Before we get into even more reasons of why I think that the Raiders are going to take care of business against the Rams, I hope that you guys subscribe. I hope that you turn on those notifications and you join Jeremy Chuggs and I this Sunday. We're going live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. 3 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be live. And I want to get this show to 179,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of y'all that hit that subscribe button. I appreciate each and every one of y'all that turn on those notifications. But I know people that rock with me on game day, those are real ones out there. So if you're a real one, subscribe, pull up on Sunday, and let's get a dub because I hate freaking losing. Let's go to the, another one here. And I put a question mark because is this going to be the Luke Getze game? And... I want to say I hope so, but the amount of confidence I have in Luke Getze, that might even be too much, right? I mean, it's about that much. I say that because according to a report, the Raiders might make Luke Getze call plays from the box this week. This has been something that I have discussed multiple times. This has been something Chugs and I have discussed multiple times. And at some point or another, if you're really bad at calling plays on the sideline, you got to at least look at all the options. So if Antonio Pierce, the Raiders aren't going to fire Luke Getze because I think that they want a scapegoat at the end of the season, I'm still going to be saying fire Getze on everything that I possibly can. But if you're not going to fire him and go, all right, well, now you got to go up into the box. Let's see if that changes anything. Because I think for a guy like Getze, going up into the box is really, really going to help. Also, you know that Getze's going to run the ball, right? <laughs> like, uh, there is death. Taxes and Luke Getze running the ball in situations where you're like, I can't even believe he's running the football there. But right now the Rams are dead last in the NFL, allowing the most rushing yards per game, 157.6. That's dead last. So if we do end up running the rock, which it does still sound like that Alexander Madison is going to be the leading back in this game. Zamir White's also coming back, which should at least be able to help out Madison stay a little bit fresh. My point is Luke Getze's going to run the ball. And hopefully, we're finally going to actually be able to run the ball. Let's go to the final reason here. And I think that this is a big moment for the Raiders. You're going to find out what type of coach Antonio Pierce is. You're going to find out what type of offensive coordinator Luke Getze is. You're going to find out what type of defensive coordinator Patrick Graham is. You're going to find out what type of coaches, what type of players we have. Because it's do or die time. And I know it's only week seven. But let's face the facts here. There's going to be Raiders players playing for their job this week. You know why? Week 8's against Kansas City. Week 9's on the road against Cincinnati. And I know the Bengals have been struggling, but if you've watched Raiders football over the past month, and if you've watched Chiefs and Bengals football over the past month, this does not look very good. And quite frankly, I think if you lose to the Rams, you're going to be 2-7. and seven going into the NFL trade deadline, which is November 5th at 4 p.m. Eastern. If the Raiders already traded away Devontae Adams, and I know what AP said, that he's not trying to tank. And I don't blame him because he wants to save his job. And if I'm Antonio Pierce, I'm looking at all y'all people that are supposed to be putting on that jersey, supposed to be putting on that helmet, rocking that shield. Do you have my back? If I feel like you're out there making business decisions, if I feel like you're not out there giving me 110%, I'm shipping your ass off. I mean, if I'm AP, I go, what do I I have to lose. I want guys to help me keep my job, and the only way that that's going to happen is if you show up in week seven, if you show up for the remainder of the season, and give me 110%. And I hate that I'm saying this. I hate that I'm saying this. But if the Raiders lose to the Rams, I think they're going to be 2-7 and seven by the NFL trade deadline. And quite frankly, if you lose to the Rams, I don't know when your next win's going to come. I have absolutely no idea, because you got the Dolphins who are probably going to have Tua back. The Broncos, and we hopefully can beat the Broncos, but they just pushed our shit in. Then you got the Chiefs again. Then you got the Bucks. Then you got the Falcons. The Jags, maybe. The Saints, they've been super banged up. My point is, this is a do-or-die week for the Raiders, and if you can't show up in front of a home base type of crowd where there's going to be a lot more Raiders fans there when your head coach, all this shit's going on with Devontae Adams, if your team can't show up this week, 
they're not going to show up at all this entire season. Coming up here, I'm going to give you my Raiders versus Rams prediction because I do believe that this is going to be a game that the Raiders win. Maybe that's me just thinking more with my heart and not thinking with my head, which I feel like a lot of times Alex would say I do the exact opposite. But I'm just that type of Raider fan where I want this team to win. And when I show up on game day, I don't care if they are 0-16. I'm going to show up there week 18 expecting this team to win. Why? Because that's what commitment to excellence, that's what Just Win Baby is all about. Before we get into this prediction, though, I do want to give you guys a little FYI. I am going to be in Vegas Saturday, October 26th. This is the day right before the Raiders and Chiefs play. So I want to know this. Where are we partying at? I got nothing to do on Saturday night. I'm going to be with a few friends, some people that also like to enjoy and watch the show, and I want to show them a good time. So how about this? Hit me up on Twitter, at MitchellRens365. I want you to tweet at me. That way I don't miss it. Or I guess your other options are send me a dollar on Venmo. I can send you a dollar back if there's a party going on. If you already can DM me on IG, try to tag me on IG. I'm trying to get down October 26th. I just got to know where the party's at. So week seven, Raiders, Rams. Both teams need a win desperately. Sean McVay in his career is four and three coming off of a bye. Though, though, one and two in his last three games coming off a bye. And this team is... Very, very unhealthy. So before I give you guys my score prediction, here's your opportunity to give me yours. Raiders, Rams, what is that score prediction for me personally? And I've thought about this one for a while. And I want to be able to say that because the last few times I've done this, I'm always like, oh, we're going the under. We're going the under. I'm not now. I think when you watch Raiders football, if they want to win, the way that this defense is played, we got to get some points up on the board. Give me the Raiders to get a dub this week, 27-24, up against the Los Angeles Rams. And if that doesn't surprise you, then you haven't been watching a lot of my shows recently. So one more time here. Here's why the Raiders are going to shock the world and beat the Rams. It's going to be a home game for the Raiders. 61% Raiders fans are expected to be there. The Rams are one of the worst teams in the NFL against the tight end position. And I love me some Brock Bowers. The Rams, they can't run the football, which is good for us because we're second worst in the NFL at stopping it. Is this going to be Luke Getze's game? Because the Rams, they are ranked dead last in the NFL rushing yards per game, and we know Getze's going to try to run the rock, and it's do or die time. What type of players, what type of coaching staff do we have? We're going to find out this week on Sunday.